Contracting. This is our second season. I am Leona Charles, CEO and founder of SBC Business Consulting, LLC, where we do all things government contracting. Hi, everyone. My name is Vivica Brooks, and I am the founder and president of the Brooks Group, also known as TVG Trains, where we prepare people for the world of work. So here's where you can find us. We have our episodes uploaded on SoundCloud at Adventures in Contracting um, or on our website at spcconsulting.org. Uh, we are on Twitter at contracting underscore in and Facebook at Adventures in Contracting and LinkedIn at Adventures in Contracting. So in our last episode, we talked a little bit about um, contract government contracts and all of the various pieces that are needed to get a contracting team together and started and, and how you move on from that. So I thought today's episode would be a great segue to talk about something that is already in place here in the district to help government contractors grow, get into that space, and to get all of the information that is coming at them at 100 miles an hour that they're like, oh, what's happening? Mm -hmm. So... Um, SBC um, is leading a project at Howard University. It's called um, the CARES uh, program. And basically what it is, is it is a offshoot of the SBDC, which is the Small Business Development Center. Um, this one's located at Howard University, and it actually is for all district residents or businesses that do a lot of business in the district. Um, and they want to get into the GovCon space. So Within this this team that we're running, we've got marketing experts, we've got a, we've got a financial experts, we've got funding experts, we've got HR experts, we've got IP experts, um, we've got uh, operational and infrastructure experts, we've got IT experts. So literally, all of the pieces of your team that you need to be an effective GovCon uh, company are there, and. And this is a free service. So this is something that the government is paying for mm -hmm. and everyone should know about okay. it. So I want to scream it from the rooftops. Absolutely. Um, but also I want to have a conversation with you to talk about why it's important to use things like this and, and what's the benefit of it. So mm -hmm. we talked a lot last time about all of the moving parts, right? You know, about not being able to just throw anybody from anywhere in your company onto government contracts and how you really needed to build a team and how you needed to build a plan and how you need to then actually stick to that plan and work the plan out, right? It's not kind of like right. that thing where you, you make a plan and you throw it on your shelf and you never look at it again. Um, and GovCon, you actually have to follow the plan, like you have to implement it. So in situations like this, um, small businesses, as you know, we wear a million different hats. This is one of those things that helps take one of those hats off and it is a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. So my question for you to kickstart this conversation is as a small business who is also a government contractor, what would be the thing that you would want the most from a program like this? I think, well, I completely agree with you. I think these programs are definitely beneficial and I think they're helpful to, um, like you said, to chart a course, right? Mm -hmm. And so as you're going through that course, and I know some of the things that are beneficial to me were as far as some assistance with the different certifications that are available to small businesses that you definitely should take advantage of. Um, the other thing that I um, know that's successful, um, that marketing piece, uh, like how do you want this sold? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times um, we are thinking about, oh, well, I like my cake. Why doesn't everybody else like my cake? And so as small businesses, we could get wrapped <laughs> up in why doesn't anybody else want this? And then just some, letting someone else look at it will allow for a few small tweaks. And then it's like, okay, now, you know, other people like it as well. So I think it's, it's a great soundboard. It's a great um, mechanism to use as far as, you know, 
having a team behind you, but not necessarily having to pay for it mm -hmm. from the standpoint of, like you said, you've got an right. operations expert, you've got an HR expert there, you've got a marketing expert. So other times you'd have to pay for this type of consulting services. Here it is available for you, you know, from other professionals within their own niche who can really take the time, look at your infrastructure or as you're building infrastructure and chime in and assist you as you're growing your small business. Right. So here's the question for you. So you mentioned certifications, which I think are a big thing, right? Because everyone talks about them because mm -hmm. in the GovCon space, there's a lot of conversation about set asides and mm -hmm. diversity and these, these certifications and everybody's like, oh, you got to get these certifications. And we all see, you know, these companies that have like 15 million letters behind their name, you know, but what do mm -hmm. they mean? And are they useful? Right. Is the question. And yeah. I actually had um, a client who came through this program who asked me and was like, well, what certification should I get? And I said, well, you know, that actually is a really good question. And I know that a lot of people are like, well, if you don't know that you, you aren't ready for it. And I think that's completely wrong. I think that was the absolute perfect question to ask. And my response was, well, who's your agency? And their response was, yeah. um, my agency. You know, my agency is, uh, I can't remember, so we'll just use something um, something generic like DGS, right? And I was like, okay, well, mm -hmm. they do a, or not DGS, DOT, right? And so DOT, their set-asides are not based on the uh, the minority set-asides or the, the woman. Right. They, they, their set-aside is a, uh, a DBE, which is a disadvantaged business set-aside. That's the only one that mm -hmm. they focus on. So... Um, it has more to do with your economic status than mm -hmm. any any other status. So there are yeah. protected classes that are assumed to be dis to be economically disadvantaged, but the crux of a DBE certification is economic, right? Mm -hmm. So I said I I told them I was like, well, you getting all of these things like 8A and a WSB. If your target agency is DOT, that's really not going to help yeah. you that much, right? And What's that's going to help you is that point. DBE status. Yeah, because I think a lot of and times most, too, most when you don't, get don't into the that. gov space, well, I mean, and that's why the center is so important because it's like, okay, here's like I said, like that sounding board and to go through because I think a lot of it too mm -hmm. is when you do try to get into the GovCon space. I mean, there's a gazillion agencies out there, and it's. I personally think you should focus on like one or two agencies, you know, and then right. go from there. Right. And then that's going to help you to narrow down and then answer those questions. And then you can really start to cultivate that relationship and see where is it. So, you know, if they're more hub zone focused or they, you might discover that they're not hub zone focused. And then it's like, okay, where is it that mm -hmm. I need to be putting in <laughs> my time because you know time is 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 valuable and precious and so it's like okay what's going to give me the right. best roi and then let me focus and drill down on that and then that way too i think it's beneficial when people do come to the center they've really thought about it because one of the things is you know it's just like you know when students come to me and say i need a job Ms. Brooks. okay we all you know need to work like yeah but where where like what have you thought about? How would you like to do that? What does your day look like? You know, not just, you know, because they there go, you know, oh, I need a job. Okay, we'll sweep that floor over there. The job. So I think it's important for small businesses to really think about. Is that funny? I don't was like, you're like, oh, I'm glad I can bring some humor to you. It's just funny. Yeah. I think it's just funny that the expectation kind of it crosses all spectrums, right? Because yeah. people will say, oh, well, that's just kids being in the title. But it's not because I see companies come with literally that same mentality. I want a contract. Yes. And you're like, yes. um, congratulations that you've made that realization. Yes. But now what do you do that warrants you having a contract, right? What, what have yeah. you done? And I tell people all of the time, the GovCon space is not a space to try stuff out, right? This is a space mm -hmm. that you go when you are established and you have figured out what it is that you do really well. Then right. you are ready Absolutely. to go into and, the GovCon yeah. space. And I think that- The government has no tolerance for you is... figuring it out. 
<laughs> which is important to note. And so I think that's why people have got to really, <laughs> you know, what does my business offer? How can we offer it? You know, when can we offer it? Where? All of these things. So go through those five W's and then you've got kind of a, a framework that you have. Then you're going in and you're asking the marketing person, the, you know, the, the, the org, uh, uh, operations consultant, the HR consultant. Here now these people can really give you some informed guidance that's going to help you to you know move to that next step because it's like okay if i say you know we want to be nationwide well we definitely need to speak with someone in hr to help us to start to think about what's the human capital going to need what kind of human capital are we going to need to be able to deliver our services or our product nationwide you know and then do a little something come back okay this is what we've done what's our next step so it really i think is a partnership between the small business and the small business development centers working together to achieve this goal of exposing and helping small businesses to expand and they do do really good job. So there's a lot of, there's a ton of trainings and they kind of circle back to what we were talking about before with the certifications. Um, it's not just GovCon that you need to be aware. I mean, because um, prime contractors are sometimes your clients too, right? Or your target clients. And they have to worry Absolutely. about certifications and set asides because they also have to meet those goals with their subs. Um, and I had another That's client who was focusing not really on government, but but on the contractors, that 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 was her client base, and so she said to me, the prime. Uh, Leona, should I get a, a, a WOSB? Yeah, yeah, on the prime. So she said, should I get WOSB? And I said, well, that depends. Who are your customers? And she's like, well, I don't want to go directly to government, but I want to I want to focus on maybe the prime contractors. And I said, okay, who are who are the prime contractors clients? And she said, well, mm -hmm. they can be anybody. Why does that matter? I said, it matters because if they're supporting an agency that doesn't support your WSB or who doesn't have goals for your WSB, then your certification is useless. You know, it's not going to help you because right. they're worried about meeting contractual obligations and helping the agency uh, make their goals for whatever set of side, you know, they determine. And you know, those goals are federally mandated. And if your certification doesn't fall within that goal structure, then you're not a priority, right? And it is what it is. Right. I mean, she was like, oh. And I was like, so the best, what I would advise you to do, or what I would recommend is that you make a list of who your prime contractors are, and then you figure out who their customers are. Because once you figure out who mm -hmm. their customers are, you then can determine whether or not your certification makes sense, you know, whether or not you have something to bring to the table, because if you want to do business with them, you've got to, I mean, you've got to have some skin in the game. If you don't, if you don't supplement a weakness for them, there's no point in them doing business with you. And, and you having a set aside, please do not go into a conversation with them and say, Hey, listen, I'm a WSB. You got to give me a subcon. No, they don't. They do not have to give you a subcontract. Right. Don't go in there and say, I'm right. going to be, give me a subcontract. They do not have to give you a contract, right? That's your icing on the cake. But what your calling card is, is listen, I am a great lawyer. I specialize in this field. I've done all of these cases. These these are the amounts of settlements I've won or, you know, these are the amount of cases I've won. That is your calling card. You being a set aside right. is something that you go, oh, and after all that greatness, bam, I'm also this. And that is yes, what gets you in. Exactly. Right? So. And that's why you have to be clear don't about your lead who, with what, your where, when, why, how. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I like this. And I think that's, that's huge. That's my takeaway. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think if you just, it just drills down. I think if we just always bring that back to focus like i'm constantly doing that for myself too what am i doing why am i doing this where are we doing it when is this going to happen and how are we going to do it and so i'm constantly bringing myself back to that space and if i ask myself those questions before i begin tasks i find that it helps to center me because it i can tend to get okay. very hmm, all over the place right and so just kind of going back 
asking those questions and then go from there. Because I do, I think it's important when, you know, as far, even when you're thinking about, you know, when we're thinking about who is it that we want to target. And I love that point that you made about, you know, because DOT does only do disadvantaged business enterprise. So you've spent all this time gathering information. They're like, that's nice. You know, and now it's it's useless because this is who you're going after, you know, where you could have spent that time, like looking into who's the contracting officer, how can I give them a presentation or how can I let right. them know who we are and that, you know, to answer those questions. So I, it does have to come with some prep work. You know, it does. It definitely has to come with some prep work that is ongoing. Let me put that caveat in there. So you start off. Yeah, I, you know, let me prepare for this meeting going to the SBDC, just like I would prepare for a meeting going to a client. Right, right. That's so that's great advice. And so I think there, so we, we touched on a couple of different areas, but I like kind of the certification um, conversation because I mm-hmm. think that it's one that's, that's had widely, but People, I think, have conversations about certifications, but they don't really talk to certifications, right? So I think it's like a buzzword and people use it and say, yeah, certifications and set asides, but really, what does that mean? And and I think that when you're talking about the five whys of marketing certification, I think it's really important what you said about doing research and having a plan because we see a lot of small businesses kind of get captivated by contract amounts, right? By award amounts and say, oh, you know, uh, an a million dollar contract would be mm-hmm. life changing. And yeah, it would, mm-hmm. but there are all kinds of things associated with that. You know, there's insurance and you and I both know supply schedule holders and CBE, there's, um, co- there's insurance requirements, there's tax requirements, um, there <laughs> are reporting requirements, which are expensive and time consuming. Um, And Mm -hmm. certifications are no less. I mean, it's a lot of paperwork to get through them. You have a responsibility to keep all that stuff together. You have to Mm -hmm. recertify. Um, Now, most most recertifications, I will say, are fairly easy. They're usually one page, um, especially if there's no change. But you are responsible for staying compliant with all of the program requirements. And Nobody is going to tell you what those are. <laughs> you know, once you are in that program, you have right. to know this kind of stuff. And you're attesting annually yes. that you're compliant. So. Yes. And I think the other because thing, some people, the like, tip that really you, helped you gotta me. you got to read the program rules. Yeah. And, and, and just set a reminder. I've gotten myself into setting a reminder, you know, just, you know, we have to do biannual reports and I, I wouldn't remember that. So I just started setting a reminder in my phone. So it pops up on my calendar, 30 days out, even when you do, um, some of the, and, and I have to say most of the certifications that we have, they will like give us a 90 day window, like hey, this certification is coming Mm -hmm. due. But one thing I was very intentional about when I set out to do certifications, because I noticed a lot of them want the same information. So I was like, okay, let's pick the certifications we're going after and we apply for them all at the same time. And that really helps, you know, because Mm -hmm. someone wants your P&L. Someone wants your, you know, your business. I mean, you've got everything right there. Yeah, when I started and do all certifications so that way when it's time to recertify so even like being on sam right we all have to be on sam if you're going to do business with the federal government so there's things that you have to attest to and then i'm like oh sam's coming up so i know i need this i've got to do this this yeah. one's going to be coming down the pike let me go ahead and just get that together yeah. and then it's right there at your fingertips and it feels like less of a chore and you're like, okay, let me take these three to four hours, knock these certs out or knock these recertifications out and keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good point. That's a really good question. And that goes back to, I think, um, the project management that we talked about last week, right? 
making sure that you've got all your certifications mm-hmm. together, keeping them. I like the ideal of uh, keeping the information uniform so that you can submit multiple uh, applications and multiple certification recertifications at the same time is a brilliant idea. Absolutely. And I'm wondering yes. why I never thought of it before, but it's really good. <laughs> it's a really good thing to have um, to sound just have, you know, because I'm all about. I'm telling you. <laughs> about having, you know, templates and things that you can just submit, you know, quickly. Um, and that is a really good thing to have, because if you've done it once, what you really should have a ready to go application, is everything that you know. And if you know that you've got to update it annually, even though you don't have to submit all of those forms, I think it's useful to have it just in case because you're going to need it for something else. So it's good to have it there. So you can just pull it and, yes. and submit it. That's brilliant. Yes. Business license, <laughs> probably the, the last two years tax returns for the business. You're definitely going to need, you know, your articles of organization or incorpororation. So like those are like the, yeah. sta- you know, a uh, uh, 90 day P&L statement. Those are like standard things that you just want to have ready to go. Or you can quickly put your hands on. So right. And, and a lot of these things. Turn it right. Right. Over. And a lot of these things actually, particularly with the district, are things that you have to submit with a proposal too, right? Your certificate of good standing, uh, your financial stability. Um, uh, if you're a new company, they want to see like your clean business hands. plan. and they w- Yeah, your clean hands. Exactly. All of these things are things that, especially if you're on the supply schedule, you have to submit with every single proposal. So having it having it in a a single place is a great idea. It just creates a standard response kit, which is great. And I'm all for it. So we talked a little bit about marketing and can we talk just, just a few minutes about why marketing certifications is a bit different in the GovCon space, because, you know, in the commercial space, you know, it's kind of like a free for all. You're like, oh, by the way, I've got, you know, I'm WSB, I'm an MB, I'm DB, and everybody's like, oh, yay, you know, because it's kind of, it's it's the burning platform of the moment, right? So every, every company is like, yes, we support these kinds of, you know, these kinds of businesses, but let's talk about why it's different in the GovCon space. And part of that is because every okay. year um, the government sets goals for every federal certification that every agency is supposed to meet. So they're not they're I don't necessarily know, and I may be speaking out of turn, but I've not never really seen an agency get any kind of punitive pushback for not meeting these goals. They're supposed to meet them. It's a part of the agency's evaluation process um, and, and performance review. And certainly the agency directors have to answer to them when they are in their hearings. Um, but I've never really seen any tangible punitive pushback if they don't meet it other than bad press and maybe the, the uh, agency director mm-hmm. is replaced. Um, but the agency itself, I've never seen like budget restrictions or anything come because they failed to meet it. Um, so with that in mind, why is it important to market your certifications to government agencies as a small business? I guess it's a question. I think it's, it's, it's important to market the services. I think one, I think it's important. And this is something I definitely picked up from you, right? When um, we were talking about, you know, going after contracts and less figuring out, cause it is its own animal completely. <laughs> and one of the things is, you know, especially when they're talking about small business set aside, a lot of times people can rely on the fact they'll say, oh, well, we didn't have enough small businesses apply or we didn't have, you know, this number. So we had to give it to, you know, a larger organization. And so they'll say, you know, small businesses at that initial stage, when they're looking at RFIs or RFQs, things of that nature, that's when small businesses really have to team up and respond to these solicitations because then they're saying okay we have enough small businesses who are here and then it also gives you an opportunity as a small business so say you don't get it you can always ask for that debrief 
right? right. That debrief is going to allow you the opportunity to now talk about your organization, what you bring to the table. It's going to allow the contracting officer, you get that face to face time. And, um, You'll also be able to ask, you know, a few questions that you may have as to why we weren't considered for this RFP, RFQ, RFI, any one of those, right? And so that's that piece where I think that, you know, is important from marketing in the government space. One, small businesses have to partner up to answer these solicitations because I can, you yeah. know, as a, as I'm sure like the small business us buzzmen and their small business liaisons are like, Hey, we're trying to get these small businesses to answer. But if we're competing against each other versus teaming up and answering these different solicitations, then that's where the, you've got that loophole and eh, we couldn't find any. Right. And then I think the second thing that's important is, just go out there and just try it. And again, this is a whole thing that I'm doing as well, just for myself and TBG trains is, you know, we've decided that we're this year, 2021, we're going to be very intentional and in focusing on department of labor and, you know, mm-hmm. building that relationship and looking to, um, looking for contracts in that space and just really getting to know that agency. And so mm-hmm. I think that's where, you know, that marketing piece can be beneficial to a small business. That is great advice. And I think that if more people were as straightforward with that advice, (laughs) then the kind of flowery language that we get that's kind of shrouded in all of this um, uh, GovCon acronym speak, I think more people would be very clear on what they had to do. And as a small business, you have a finite amount of resources, right? So I think it, it makes sense to find focus and, and implement. And I think that is just great. So um, I'm aware that we are winding down. So I just kind of want to bring us to our takeaways. And for me, I'm going to have two this episode because I, I love your five whys and I think it's really good because a lot of us, including myself, are not always entirely focused. So I love that. Um, but also being very intentional and t- laser focused and targeting who your your agency is and in terms of what your certification can do and if they buy what you sell. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think that's good. My takeaway is um, I definitely learned, I knew that the small business development centers had the, the marketing and the, um, the marketing, the operational. I didn't know as far as the human resource component of it. So I definitely took that mm-hmm. away. Yeah. And just, you know, you listed off like seven different um, specialties consultants that are available for small businesses, specifically here in the District of Columbia, or if you're doing business in the District of Columbia, and that these services are free. And what a great opportunity to help grow and expand your business with people who are experts in their niche, you know, to to get that kind of advice. How can people um, get in contact with the Howard University SBDC? All our acronyms. So, (laughs) so, um, Quickly, they can go to uh, 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 SB, SBDC, or I'm sorry, dcsbdc.org, and they can register mm-hmm. as a client, and that request will come mm-hmm. to me, and I will set them up with one of our counselors who will do kind of a, a pre-assessment to determine what area they need to be in, and we'll set them off to a specialty counselor, and it's all free, um, and People can get a hold of me either through office line, Twitter, you can, you know, text me, whatever, it's fine. Email me. All of that information will be there. Once you get an email from me, you'll have all of my information and you can, you can get in touch with us. And, you know, as long as you live in the district or you do business in the district, it's completely free. And this is really expensive stuff um, commercially. So to, to get it in a free setting where you're having this type of expertise is um, it's, it's a crazy experience that you definitely should take take advantage of. Cool. And then what is it? Is there anything people need to have before they register? Can you be at any phase in your in your business? To yeah, any phase. Services? Pre-startup, startup, okay. you can be mature turning over five million dollars. It doesn't matter. Any at any stage in any type of business. Go to dcsbdc.org and register as a client and you can be seen and, you know, we can get you on your GovCon journey. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening and we will see you next time. Bye.